um, there's a guy at one of my talks um, said, you know, you talk about this culture being based on violence, but I don't see it. I don't, I don't see violence in my own life. And I said, well, first off, where's your shirt made? And he looked, and it was made in Bangladesh. I was like, okay, do we even need to talk about that? And the next thing I says is, so do you pay rent? And he's like, yeah. And I said, why? And he said, well, because I don't own. And I said, no, that's not my point. What would happen if you didn't pay rent? And he said, well, eventually, I guess I'd get evicted. And I said, let's be really tangible. I mean, what would happen? What, what physically would happen? He said, well, a sheriff would come to my door. I said, okay, stop. What happens if you invite the sheriff in for dinner? And he said, well, I don't know. I guess he'd come in. He said, okay, so you have dinner with the sheriff. And afterwards, you say, you know, it was nice having you here for dinner, but you're not really that good company, so I think you should leave now. What would happen? He said, well, the sheriff would pull out his gun, and he would take me out of my home. I said, ah, so the reason you pay rent is because if you don't, then some guy is going to come with a gun and force you out. And he got it. And then I said, okay, what would happen if you're really hungry and you go to the grocery store, there's a lot of food there, you know, and you just start eating? What would happen? And he said, well, probably they would call the cops and some guy would come with a gun. I said, yeah, same guy. He's a real asshole, isn't he? And the point is, it's really, it's a really strange system when you have to pay in order to sleep, and you have to pay in order to eat. We're not talking about luxuries. You have to pay to exist. That forces us into the system. I was talking to an Indian friend of mine about 10 or 12 years ago about um, how it works on their reserve up in Canada that um, basically any of the members of the community can build a house basically wherever they want. You can't sell it. Um, so you can, you can build something to use, but you can't build something to sell. It makes a lot more sense to me. Um, and then the other thing... Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it came clear to me that... I mean, you know, of course, that the bison were wiped out so to, to bring the Plains Indians to terms, and that's one reason that the salmon were killed, is to, is to break the cultural back of the Northwestern Indians. And it's really clear to me that no wild stock of, no wild community of foodstuffs can survive the logic of capitalism. Because if I can go down to Elk Creek and if I can catch salmon, why would I go to the Safeway and buy it? So, you know, why would people eat at McDonald's if you have passenger pigeon flock so large that they're darkening the sky for days at a time that you can go out and I've heard one shot at them or at Eskimo curlews would bring down a dozen birds and the Eskimo curlews were sometimes so fat that they would explode when they hit the ground when they were shot and um, why would you possibly go all these are huckleberries and you can guess how many berries I ever buy, you know, why would I buy berries when I've got more than I can possibly eat here? That's how it used to be. And once again, that's necessary. Oh, here's one more part of this, which is a great letter by a northern, uh, I'm sorry, a great letter by a southern pro-slavery philosopher about 1830s was written to an abolitionist, capitalist, northern philosopher, a capitalist abolitionist philosopher. And the pro-slavery owner said, look, we would be very happy to give up all our slaves if we have the same conditions you have up there. Because slave ownership is only the optimal economic choice under very specific land ownership conditions. If you have not very many people on a lot of land, the only way you can get them to work for you is at the point of a gun because access to land means self-sufficiency. If, on the other hand, you have a lot of people and you've got land title all tied up, they have no choice but to work for you for whatever pittance. So he said, frankly, I'd rather have it like you do because you don't have to pay for them when they get sick. You don't have to, you don't have to pay for their food when they're, when they're infants. You don't have to pay for them in the old age. Um, so, frankly, you can offer them whatever pittance you want, and if they don't take it, you'll hire somebody else. It made a lot of sense to me. Land, access to land is everything. And, by the way, land ownership doesn't exist. I don't own this land here. What actually happens is my mom owns a piece of paper that we all agree 
means that she owns this land. But she doesn't own the land. Warehouser doesn't own any land. Sierra Pacific doesn't own any land. The U.S. government doesn't own any land. They have pieces of paper that we all agree mean that they own the land. But what there is is there's land, and there's starving people, and there's people who are paying money to live on land that other people have pieces of paper that say that they own, but it's all a shared hallucination.